All right, joining me now live from Israel, we're going to go to David Pine and then Leo Holman, is Aaron, a reporter on the ground in Israel. What is it over there, about 4.02 a.m.? Yes, it is, Brennan, early in the morning. Yeah, it is. Thank you for getting up, I'll, although I don't know how you could sleep with all this going on. So you, you guys have moved into Rapa. Uh, that is the word. Uh, it seems as though this whole uh, thing about a peace, you know, a ceasefire will give you some hostages. The Hamas wasn't even mentioning the hostages. It was a setup. I think it's a big PR mess to try to make Israel look bad. And uh, your, your, your team basically says, look, we're done with this. We're going in. So tell me, what are you hearing on the ground over there as regards to uh, moving into Rafa? For those who maybe don't know or need to be reminded, we're talking southern Gaza here, right up by Egypt. Yeah, correct. It's the southern or southeastern area of Rafa. Our tanks, our infantry, our artillery have moved in. We're, uh, we're already pounding from the air into uh, some of those areas. There we go, some of the pictures. Um, and we've been talking about this for weeks, and there's been delay after delay after delay. First, there was Ramadan. We waited patiently for Ramadan to, to, to uh, finish. Then we had Passover. We, w- we, we waited for that to finish. Uh, now we've had Holocaust Memorial Day, which was, we just finished yesterday. Uh, and uh, we... Uh, we gave uh, Hamas an ultimatum. We gave them a week to uh, send back the hostages or we're moving in. And uh, even before that week uh, finished, we decided to move in. And, and it's about time. The public are grow, they're way, way overtired uh, of this delay, this uh, psychological warfare that Hamas are playing. And believe it or not, uh, We talked about this a few hours ago, Brandon. Uh, Just as we started to go in and started to uh, take out some buildings and take out some terrorists, uh, Hamas pull a a trick, uh, a move by saying, oh, we are now ready for a ceasefire. We agree to a ceasefire. Agree? Who do they agree with? Well, as you and I talked about, they agree not only with themselves, uh, but in the in the num- last number of hours, I don't know if you've seen this, Brennan, but it, it was not just Qatar and Egypt. It was William Burns from the CIA yep. who has been on the quiet behind Israel's back without conferring with Israel, without bringing Israel into this uh, negotiation. Uh, they have all this alliance. And by the way, Turkey, Turkey's name is on this as well. Uh, and perhaps, perhaps the Iranians. But uh, all of this uh, confederation, they seem to have an agreement. Uh, and yet Israel is, is, seems to be no part of it. And the big change in the agreement that we were trying to get a few days ago is that 33 hostages would be uh, returned back to Israel for a ceasefire. Now Hamas are saying, well, we're going to tweak that a little bit. We're going to change that. We're not going to say 33 hostages. We're uh, Sorry, we're not going to say 33 live hostages. We're going to say 33 live or dead mm. hostages. Mm. That's what they're saying. That's the bargaining chips that they have decided to put on the table to make them look like, to the international community, to make them look like they are uh, uh, achievable, they are uh, reasonable, they are negotiable. And Israel now, uh, the spotlight is on us, knowing very well that we're not going to agree to that. I've been watching the BBC and some of the comments underneath, like, oh, Israel, I'm interested in getting the hostages back. I mean, ridiculous. But this is the this the guerrilla warfare through the media that Hamas are waging. And, and, let, very, and let's not forget, you were, let's not forget to remind the audience, you were with me yesterday morning, Sunday morning, Worldview Report Sunday, 10 a.m. Central, and we had to go on the air report uh, for uh, IDF dead. Uh, they were got... Uh, Hamas was bombing a humanitarian zone. They were hitting into a humanitarian zone, hitting an ambulance and killing four IDF, correct? 
Correct, Brennan. And the area that it happened is an area called Kerem Shalom, which I know very well. And believe it or not, that place where that it was fired upon, Kerem Shalom, where uh, our soldiers were killed, uh, before we could even bury the bodies, the American administration were saying to Israel, you need to open up that crossing because we closed it straight away because of the dangers, because of the mortar fire that were uh, launched down on us. We closed it and American, uh, I'm sorry to, to, to speak against your nation, but the administration was saying uh, immediately you need to open back that uh, Kerem Shalom crossing and let the humanitarian aid, number one, before we could bury the bodies, and number two, we need to have it secured before we're going to open it back up again. So the pressure, uh, you know, the, the word that's being used here, is the word sabotage that uh, the the uh, the international community, the American uh, administration, the Biden administration, they are trying to sabotage Israel. They're trying to, uh, and this is not new. They they are definitely uh, this is a betrayal. They are wanting the Netanyahu government out. That and don't forget uh, for the viewers that the, the objective here is they are afraid that once we finish off Rafah, which will be the four last remaining uh, Hamas terrorist battalions, once we finish those uh, battalions off, we will pretty much be in full control of the Gaza Strip, which and, will and then, mean... And then you're going to turn your attention to Lebanon and, and, uh, and Hezbollah, which are Biden's buddies. You know, he's given billions of dollars to Iran, which are helping Hamas, but obviously Hezbollah is actually Iran. Um, and you're, and we're, you were telling us that here in the month of May, there's probably plans to go into Lebanon. There is. There is, absolutely. Um, even as with uh, this last two days, last yesterday, 85 uh, missiles, rockets, were fired from Lebanon. But um, in fact, by the way, uh, the Iranians put out a statement uh, a few hours ago saying, uh, and I quote, Israel, you don't know what you have started. And that was in response to uh, us moving into Rafah, trying, uh, remember, Hamas are an Iranian proxy. So the Iranians are watching very carefully. But again, this is the key is once we fully take over the Gaza Strip, then the two-state solution is pretty much on the back burner. Well, in we fact, be- in fact, Benjamin Netanyahu, if I can find it real quick, I got David Pine standing in the wings, but um, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu has released a PowerPoint, or somebody with his office has released a PowerPoint of how they're going to revitalize the Gaza Strip. Looks pretty beautiful. Have you seen that? No, I've heard, I, I've heard talks about it. I haven't actually seen it yet, but uh, I know that a lot of the right-wing uh, government and a lot of the even left-wing now are saying, we must never pull out of Gaza Strip. We must annex it. It's ours. We will not make the same mistake that we did in 2006 when we handed it over to, to uh, the Palestinian Authority. Mm-hmm. Uh, if I can find it real quick, I'll show it. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, Associated Press, here we go. Israel Prime Minister, Israeli Prime Minister announced his plan to rebuild areas near Gaza border, not build inside, uh, border, not build inside the border. Hmm? Near, not inside. I don't know how that is. Uh, this is April 19th. I don't know if this is the exact same article, but I, I actually found a PowerPoint today. I'll see if I can find it. I had at one point a PowerPoint open. It was pretty remarkable. Maybe I put it at worldviewreport.com. Maybe that's where I did it. Let's see. Let's see your daily aggregated news site. Um... You know, as you get finding it, Brandon, yeah. you know, before we pulled out in 2006, we had 7,000 Jewish people living there with great farming, great communities, beautiful beaches. Uh, it was a very prosperous area. Of course, when we pulled out, hoping that it would bring peace with the Palestinians, uh, people were saying with the international aid, financial support, it would turn into the 
Singapore of the Middle East. And sadly, all of those billions and billions of dollars mm. that many American taxpayers' money went to, it actually went to building underground tunnels and arming the uh, Hamas. Here it is. Uh, Logan, help me, Logan, help me find it. Thank you. It was at Worldview Report. It just gotten moved on the page. Here we go. Revealed uh, Netanyahu's utopian plan for Gaza 2035. And it has a full PowerPoint presentation. I don't read I Hebrew, wonder but... if that's got something to do with what we've been talking about over the last year or two, Brandon. The... Uh, the city of Neum that the Saudi Arabians are wanting well, look at that. to look at that. build. Look at that. That's Saudi Arabia right there. And we see it going up yeah. to Jordan. And we know that they were talking about a train that was going to take them right to the Temple Mount. Remember that? Uh, yes, from Riyadh to Tel... Well, not to exactly to the Temple Mount, but a train from Riyadh. Well, there it is. Of Saudi Arabia. There it is right there. To Tel Aviv, exactly. And this is why the Americans are pushing uh, for uh, uh, relations between Saudi Arabia and Israel. They want that to go ahead. There it is, the city of Neum, which means in Latin, a new future. You're reading that uh, in Hebrew, I'm guessing, right? Uh, I'm reading it now, exactly. Is that, yeah. is, is that what this says up here? Uh, no, it doesn't. But I, I know a lot about the city that. Uh, well, I uh, thought maybe you were reading Saudis. that on the slide. You act like you were reading this on the slide. Were you? No, I wasn't. I was just uh, okay. uh, uh, talking about the, what, what it says on the slide there. Um, well, it's just uh, it's a map. It's pointing out where. Yeah, but what is this? Look uh, at all the look at all the Arabs. Look at all the sheiks. Yeah, well, that's that's uh, the the Saudi regime led by uh, Mohammed bin Salman. He's right before, but behind it. By the way, I heard just yesterday that there there's a uh, it's not clar uh, verified that there was a potential assassination plot on his life uh, yesterday. Yeah, uh, we heard that too. Been... We're, we're waiting to hear if that was confirmed or not. But yeah. right. So look at that. That's so, uh, that's that's what Benjamin Netanyahu now, reportedly now had that, planned. What you showed on the screen that actually does include Aza or Gaza, uh, as we say in English and Hebrew, it's Aza, but uh, it is included. And maybe this is why. Uh, see, this is this is quite new that uh, that Gaza is part of the Saudi uh, vision to include. And I ha that's the first time I've seen that, Brandon. I know a lot about the city. So you're telling me I'm teaching you things tonight. Yeah, absolutely. And but I do believe, yeah, for sure. Well, we're we always learn, but the, you know, this is I believe a political uh move to try and get uh uh the Palestinian Authority again to push for that two state solution. You know, for for all that we know, um including the Gaza strip uh, the the big question is who is going to be in control of the Gaza Strip, and it could well be if they're including Gaza in this city, it could be that the Americans and the international community are wanting the Saudi Arabians and an international force to be in control. Which would explain, of the Gaza which would Strip. explain when Ezekiel thirty eight and thirty nine happen, it refers somehow to. Saudi Arabia is kind of sitting on the sideline. Well, it might be because they're sitting right there in Gaza, right? You know, they're in yeah. Israel. Absolutely. And who knows who they will allow to sit with them? Fascinating. All right. Like, I got to run. Whoever. I got to I got to run to um, to David Pine. But real quick, um, we're on the air for another 45 minutes. So if something comes back on, just text me. and We'll pop you on before the morning's over. Sound good? I sure will. Thank now, I, you. I want to announce real quick, uh, Aaron is going to be coming to the U.S. Uh, for six to eight weeks in July and August. If you would like to go to his website and uh, like the nation's ministry dot com and email him from there. Uh, or I guess your email is Aaron one at live dot com is email. Uh, if your church or patriot group or conservative group or Bible study or home church would like to book Aaron to come speak. Uh, email him, Aaron, and then the number one at live.com. 
He's coming for a six to eight week tour. He'll be in our studio, but this will give you a chance, guys, to interact with him uh, straight up and face to face. So uh, support him as he comes through this tour because he was a licensed tour guide. Well, he is still, but that business is gone, by the way, side for now. And so he's coming here. He works for us, obviously, supported through our foundation, wvwfoundation.com. But he's going to come and do a six to eight week tour. Uh, speaking to her, and uh, we'd like to help fill up his calendar. So please check that out. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you, Brennan.